William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Murder is a human, just like anybody else. Every once in a while, their work begins to tire them. They need a vacation, which isn't too much of a change for them. They kill time instead of people. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. The office where my license as a confidential investigator hangs is on Madison Avenue. Madison Avenue is in New York City. New York City in the summertime is a good place to go away from. I was going away from it, in the general direction of the Adirondacks and a week's fishing. I rarely catch any fish, which makes two parties of the deal very happy, the fish and me. And I hate fish. I was in the club car, looking admiringly at a plantis punch when company came. Uh, would you have any objections if I sat here? Well, would anybody object to Santa Claus dropping in? <laughs> Thank you. What's your name? Barry Craig. I'm Claire Roberts. What are you drinking? I haven't started yet. It's almost too pretty to drink. <laughs> it's a plantis punch. Mm, looks wonderful. Uh, would you mind? No. Oh, waiter. Yes, sir. Uh, one of these for the lady. I'll plant his punch, sir, right away. Where are you going, Barry? The Adirondacks. They're very tall mountains. Well, I don't intend to climb any. What I had in mind was a small amount of fishing. Well, that's a wonderful coincidence. It is? I'm going fishing, too. For what? Fish. Oh, fine. Barry, uh, before the waiter gets back... Yes? Will you keep this for me? This? It's only a small envelope. Please, Barry... Well, why You'll do you... give it back to me when... Oh. Your drink, madam. Uh, thank you. Will there be anything else, sir? Uh, not right now. Thank you, sir. What did you do with the envelope? My breast pocket. <laughs> You're very sweet. And now let's drink... Oh, but Barry, <laughs> watch out. Well, you knocked the glass out of my hand. Yeah. Well, I suppose accidents will happen. No accident. What? I spotted the waiter dropping something into your drink when he was bringing it. Oh, no. Hold it. A little accident, sir? That's the way it looks. I'll get the lady another drink. Uh, don't bother. The lady isn't thirsty anymore. Thank you, sir. Come on, Claire. But I did want that drink. Even if it was poison? I could have been wrong. Maybe all the waiter dumped into the drink was a pinch of nutmeg or something. I didn't think so, though. I've taken a bedroom. Here it is. Uh, would you like to come in for a bit? Sure. You're uh, wondering about me, aren't you, Barry? A little. Was it nice? It was puzzled. Oh, you mean the envelope and the drink. I'd like to tell you what's in the envelope, but I, I don't dare. Why not? Because then you might become one of them. One of who? One of the people who want me to die. She didn't go on to explain. There wasn't much conversation after that. She said she was tired. I said goodnight and went on to my bedroom. Hmm, I've been careless and left the lights on. Ah, uh, but you didn't leave the lights on. I didn't, huh? I put them on. Why? I'm afraid of the dark, shall we say? If you like. Now, Mr. Craig, if it wouldn't trouble you too much, may I have the envelope Miss Roberts gave you? It would trouble me too much. I was being polite, but only superficially. The envelope, if you please. I don't have it. Mr. Craig, you may be under the impression that this gun I'm pointing at you is merely for display purposes. It isn't. It's a rather deadly weapon. If I must employ it on you, I shall. Aboard a train filled with people? Oh, come now, Mr. Craig. Surely you know enough about firearms to recognize a silencer, don't you? The only sound this gun will make when fired would resemble a cough. I don't have a cold. 
you were pleased to make a jest. I have smiled. Now, the envelope. I haven't got it. I'm not a child, Mr. Craig. I know Miss Roberts gave it to you. You must have been snooping. I would rather have that envelope from you alive, but I am prepared to forego my preferences and take it from you dead. Well, stick to your preferences. Would you like to search me? Take your jacket off. Okay. And toss it to you? Oh, no. Just drop it at your feet. Thank you. Now move back against the wall. A careful boy. An explanation of why, in my profession, I am still alive. Now your jacket. Mm-hmm. No envelope. No envelope. Mr. Craig. Yeah? Where is it? I don't remember. Very well. You have exactly five minutes in which to remember what you did with that envelope. Five minutes in which to remember or die. The gentleman with the silencer on his revolver was a tired-looking man, beautifully dressed right down to the gloves he wore. It occurred to me they'd never find his prints on the gun he was getting ready to use on me. I felt bitter about that. I also began wondering how smart I'd been hiding Claire's envelope in Claire's bedroom. You haven't very much time left. I haven't got the envelope either. But before you knock me off, maybe it would be more polite if you mentioned your name. It's Wiley, if that helps you any. Wiley? Doesn't help at all. I... Well, come right in. Don't tell. Sorry. Mr. Uh, Craig? I'm Craig. I have a telegram for you. Fine. You'd better wait. There might be an answer. Mr. Wiley here is leaving anyway. Uh, yes, of course. Leaving your bedroom, Mr. Craig. Not the train. Hmm. Well, let's get at the telegram. Hey. Nothing here but a blank sheet of paper. That's right, Mr. Craig. Maybe it's right, but it isn't usual. Well, I thought it would be the best excuse for getting the other gentleman out of here. Any excuse would have been the best. I don't understand how you come in on this, though. Miss Roberts sent me. For what? The envelope she asked you to hold for her. She would like to have it now. Of course. Oh, uh, conductor. Yes? Oh, what time is it? Uh, Let me see. Uh, Yes, uh, 10.50. Thanks. Now, if you'll give me the envelope. That's a nice costume you're wearing. Costume? Sure. I've never seen a real conductor wear a wristwatch before. He must have had a glass jaw. He went down and out quietly and quickly. I worried for a couple of seconds. Maybe conductors have started wearing wristwatches. But then I stopped worrying. Because after I went through his pockets, I found out his name was James Bryan. His shoulder holster told me he preferred a 32 caliber revolver with its serial number filed off. And the haircut under the barred conductor's cap said that Mr. Bryan had very recently been a guest at a penitentiary. I left the phony conductor in my bedroom and decided to visit Claire Roberts and hers. It was maybe time I found out exactly what was in that envelope. There was a vestibule between the car she had her bedroom in and mine. A vestibule that was occupied by a club car waiter who tried to drug or poison Claire Roberts. A waiter who's finished with waiting, though. Somebody had buried a knife in his back. Who is it? Barry Craig. Late. I've been keeping in touch with the time. Has anything happened? Quite a lot has happened. You better let me in. Of course. Thank you. You still have the envelope? No. <gasps> Barry! Don't worry. I know where it is. Where? In a safe place. Claire, what's inside that envelope? I can't tell you. It, it's not my secret. I wonder if you realize exactly what kind of a secret it is. I'm not sure I know what you mean. It's led, among other things, to an attempt on my life. Oh, no. It has also led to imposture. Led me to knock a man down, and finally, very finally, it led to the death of a man. Which man? The waiter who tried to gimmick your drink. The waiter? But I didn't even know him. Maybe not, but he knew you. I... I can't help that. 
You can tell me what's inside the envelope. I can't believe me, Barry. Could you tell Mr. Wiley about it? <gasps> I see you recognize the name. He... He's the head of them, the people after the... The what? Barry, he's evil. He's terribly evil. So is that lion. Claire, would it interest you to know that among those aboard this train is the next convict named James Bryan? <gasps> I didn't catch her as she fell. I let her fall. She hit pretty hard, which told me at least one thing. The faint was genuine. I didn't rush to revive her. There were things to be done first. One of them was to get her suitcase open. I did. Now, we'll have a close in it. Maybe I was a cad for intruding on a beautiful girl's privacy. Any thoughts I might have had about that didn't last long. For a girl who was going fishing, Claire Roberts had packed the wrong thing. A couple of silk dresses, sweaters, odds and ends of nylon, and a number of high heel shoes. So I shut the suitcase. It would have been fun thinking of how Claire would look in the various clothes she was carrying, but I didn't have time for fun. One thing was pretty obvious, that the clothes she'd brought, whatever she was going fishing for, it wasn't fish. Yeah. I must have fainted. You did. Here, I'll give you a hand up. Thanks. It was silly, fainting like that. It was genuine. Who's James Bryant? I don't know. Just the mention of his name made you faint. Well, I, I meant I don't know what he's doing on this train. He's a gangster, Barry. Uh huh. He kills people. In which case, he ought to be in jail. Why isn't he? Well, he was in jail. Barry, he must have escaped. That's not legal. You're sure he's on this train? Very sure. He's the gent I knocked out a little while ago. Where is he? In my bedroom. You're about to suggest I get a half a dozen conductors together and uh, arrest Brian? No. No? Well, I mean... Well, well, of course he's an escaped convict and all that, but... Barry, the door is... Somebody's opening, Barry. That light, put it out quick. Shots miss Claire. They miss me. They were, after all, shots in the dark. Hmm. They did wake a lot of conductors, though. And these were genuine conductors. They all carried nice, big watches, which made them helpful so far as giving us the right time. Went. But beyond that, they didn't have any good ideas, so they left. Barry. Yes. You didn't tell them about the envelope I gave you. Neither did you. You didn't tell them about the dead waiter, either. Waste of time. They all came through the vestibule where I'd seen him. But they didn't mention anything about A dead waiter? No. Which means he isn't with us anymore. Somebody threw him off the train? Has to be. Brian? Well, that's a question Brian could answer better than I. I think I'll go look him up. I don't want you to leave me. There's a conductor on watch outside this bedroom. He'll be safe enough. Maybe. But will you? I didn't waste any time thinking up an answer to that question. I couldn't think of a good one anyway. I did hesitate for a minute outside my bedroom door and then decided that he who hesitates is a hesitator. Mr. Bryan, I discovered, had left. Maybe I should have been sorry about that. I wasn't. Time was 20 past midnight. In a few hours, we'd be reaching the Adirondacks and the fishing lakes that Claire was heading for, according to her. I wondered if going to sleep was the smart thing to do. Well, I could brush my teeth anyway, I decided. It's good for your teeth. By the time I got my toothbrush out, though, I changed my mind. I'd packed a blue one. The one I found in my suitcase was yellow. I lifted it to my nose and put it right down again bristles had been thoroughly soaked in something I strongly suspected was a deadly poison. Poison that gives off the odor of almonds. I 
Come in. I'm sorry I have to barge in on you so late, but... Uh, well, that's all right, Mr. Gray. As head conductor on this train, uh, you might be able to help. Did anything else happen? No, but it was intended to. That's not important, though. There's a Mr. Wiley on this train. Could you tell me where he is? Well, if he's reserved a compartment of the bedroom, yes. Give me a moment. Sure. Those shots at you in the late is dreadful. Well, they're not so bad. They they all missed. Uh, Mr. Thomas Wiley has a compartment B in car 437. Thanks. Is that all you wanted? It'll have to do for right now, except, uh, we're on our way to Martindale. Have they had anything exciting happen up there recently? Martindale? Well, it uh, seems that the postmaster's wife and the grocery clerk... Oh, I uh, to, uh... didn't exactly mean along those lines. Uh, I, I meant any crimes, hold-ups, or... Uh... Oh, oh, I see. Well, well, yes, yes, there was something. It uh, it happened several weeks ago. Well, what was it? The payroll robber, it seems to me. A man killed, too, the watchman. And the criminal? Well, the police are still looking for them, as far as I know. They worked pretty quick. The reason I remember about it is they... The train was held up for a couple of hours while the police went through it, looking for the for the payroll money. Would they find it? No, they didn't. They couldn't hold anybody either. There was no proof, you see. Uh, large payroll? Well, it's one of the lumber concerns back in the mountains. Pretty large, I'd say. Too large to get into a small envelope, huh? Oh, yes, yes. Well, thanks a lot. Well, I've been glad to answer your questions, Mr. Craig. I wonder if Mr. Wiley will be. I had plenty to think about while finding compartment B, car 437. By the time I found it, I stopped thinking. Who's there? Barry Craig. I wasn't really expecting you. Weren't you? Better take your hand out of that pocket before I come in. I, uh... There's a conductor in this car. He wouldn't approve of shooting passengers. Very well. I'll disarm for the moment. There, guns out of the way. Come in. Thanks. Now, to what do I owe this visit? The fact that I didn't brush my teeth. You're being obscure. Blunt. Someone tampered with your toothbrush? You did. You have proof of that? Enough to satisfy me. Among other things, how did you know it was the toothbrush, not the toothpaste that had been tampered with? A lucky guess. Maybe not so lucky. Well, I... Did you know that James Bryan is on this train? He is. I find that of no interest. You're a liar. Have you seen that waiter recently? The one you bribed to drug Claire Roberts' drink? You're making quite a number of unfounded assumptions. No assumptions, not unfounded. Have you? I don't choose to spend my time with waiters. Too bad you didn't spend more time with this one. Oh, why? You might have talked him out of testifying against you. You're lying. You really think so? I I don't know what the waiter may have told you, but whatever it was, it's not true. He, He's a blackmailer. That could be. Miss Roberts and I were shot at less than an hour ago. Well, I've been in this bedroom for the last two hours. Got any witnesses to prove that? I, I, no, you could hardly expect. True me. enough. Mr. Wiley, how do you feel about payrolls? I have no particular feelings about them. We're reaching Martindale in a few hours... You're getting off there? Why should I be traveling there otherwise? For the same reason that Claire Roberts is, or James Bryan is. And that reason being? The payoff. I left Mr. Wiley. His conversation lacked frankness. I wandered through the train looking for Mr. Bryan. I didn't think he'd be out in public view. He wasn't. I returned to my bedroom, shaved, and twiddled my thumb. The only result of that was that half hour before arrival, I almost sprained my left thumb. Barry. I was hoping you wouldn't be asleep. I I couldn't. Uh, Come in. Barry, I'm frightened. You've got reason enough. Someone's tried to drug you and to shoot you. I know. You haven't asked me for that envelope again. I think maybe you'd better keep it. Until when? Where are you going to be staying? The Green Lake Lodge. Oh, do you know what the phone number is? Green Lake 465. 
465. I'll phone you after we get in, as soon as I think it's safe, and then we can meet and... You're sure you'll phone me? Well, of course I'll want that envelope. After all, I've gone through because of it. You... Okay, then. You'll phone me. Well, looks like we've arrived. On time. Yes. I think maybe I'd better get that envelope now. Get it? Yeah. I slipped it behind the seat cushion here. What? Uh-huh. Untouched. Y- you hid it here? Sure. Safest place for it. The last place anyone would think of my hiding it in. After they'd seen you give it to me in the club car. Barry, you are clever. Now, uh, you better leave first. I'll follow after a while. And Claire. Yes? Give me a ring sometime, huh? Claire got off the train and I watched her. Wiley got off immediately after she did. He didn't follow her. Brian also must have left the train, but he didn't show in the open. However, he didn't follow Claire either. Nobody it was seen was interested in where she was going. But when I got into a cab, it was a different proposition. Uh, mister? Yeah? Ain't none of my business, but uh, there's a cab following us. There is? Yeah, you're right. Matter of fact, it's even more complicated than that. It is? Yeah. There's another cab following that one. It added up neatly enough. Wiley was trailing me. Brian was trailing Wiley. I didn't think the hotel management would care for either of them. Therefore, uh, cab eight. Yep. Pull over to the curb. Okay. Now, wait for me, huh? Okay. Craig? Craig? Have fun following me? Oh, look here, Craig. I suggest you look back. Back? Brian. Yeah, Brian. What are you after? Stop kidding. You're not the only one who has a gun. You dirty... Take it easy, boys. Hmm? You've got too big an audience for fireworks. Three cab drivers, me. They don't bother me. You don't either. Even if I owe you something for that sock on the jaw, but we'll forget it the minute you hand over the envelope. You can have it. Now, wait a moment. You can have it too, Mr. Wiley. Both of you can have it. One condition, though. What's that? That it's open here and now. No. No? No envelope. Uh, Don't uh, be a fool, Brian. He could have opened it at any time if he'd wanted to. We've got nothing to lose. Well. Okay. Thanks. This is the envelope given to me by Claire Roberts. So it would appear. uh, Yeah. It ain't been opened. Fine. I will now open it. And we discover, to somebody's surprise, maybe, that the envelope was... Empty. Right. Goodbye, gentlemen. Hey, wait. Great. How can I be sure you didn't open it before I... You can be sure because Mr. Wiley is leaving. Oh, yeah, he must have figured... So long, Craig. Goodbye. Or maybe only till we meet again. hotel, checked in, looked at the lake, and went to sleep. I slept for quite a while. No phone call disturbed me. Towards evening, I got up and performed a couple of errands. One took very little time. The other consisted of crawling under the baggage counter at the railroad station. The baggage clerk understood. Clerk? Yes, miss? Uh, Will you get my bag for me, please? Here's the check. Oh, thank you, miss. Get it for you right away. They ought to build... Higher counters. Barry. Hello, Claire. What are you doing here? Waiting for you to phone me about the envelope. Oh, I I did phone several times. The line was busy. Funny. Because there's no such number. Oh. You still have the envelope? No, no. I I turned it over to Wiley and Brian. Oh. Don't look so hopeful. They opened it right away. The baggage check you just handed the clerk wasn't in it. As Wiley and Brian had thought. I... uh... 
I admit I hoped they'd go after you for the empty envelope. They did. I'm a fair-sized decoy, Claire, but not made out of wood. I realized the envelope you gave me was empty. I also realized after I had had a look at your suitcase that you weren't coming up here for the fishing. You were carrying the suitcase as a blind. You came here for only one thing. Here's your bag, Ben. For that. You know what's in it? Sure. A payroll, Claire. Okay, baby, hand it over. Uh, Brian! You didn't think I was so dumb I couldn't figure you held out on a baggage check? No, I... I... Give me that bag. I already killed a couple of guys for it. The waiter on the train among them? I had to make sure Claire didn't pass the baggage check to him. Don't worry, this confession ain't gonna do you much good. It's a large gun you have there. Large enough to take care of you and the clerk. Now hand over that bag, Claire. Once I was dope enough to pass you the bag of check when the cops was after me. Not anymore. Oh, all right, all right. I don't think so. Hmm? My hands are below the level of the counter, Brian. What do you think I was doing while I was waiting for Claire and you to show up? What? Practicing this. <laughs> Funny they never realize that the guns they use on other people can be used on them. Oh, don't go away, Claire. You've got a date. It didn't take the police long to arrive. They took Claire with them and Brian. Brian wasn't badly hurt. He'd be in perfect health by the time they got around to electrocuting him. As for me, I went back to the lodge. I was a little sorry about Claire. The way it turned out, all I was going to wind up with was uh, fish. The next week's story, For Love of Murder, a jail cell built for two becomes a honeymooner's cottage when a prisoner of love squares a triangle by simply eliminating the competition. Good night, folks. See you next week. You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Death Buys a Bedroom, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story of For Love of Murder, about which Barry Craig has this to say. In next week's story, For Love of Murder, a jail cell built for two becomes a honeymooner's cottage, when a prisoner of love squares a triangle by simply eliminating the competition. Good night, folks. See you next week. The National Broadcasting Company has just brought you an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator, directed by Arthur Jacobson. Also heard were Betty Lou Gerson as Claire, Byron Kane as the waiter, Jack Moyles as Wiley, Lou Krugman as Brian, and Victor Rodman as the conductor. Eddie King speaking. Here's a word about the daytime listening NBC has in store for you Monday through Friday. It's a refreshing schedule with quiz, music, news, and heartwarming drama. A well-balanced lineup for your summer day. For quiz fun, there's Strike It Rich, the quiz show with a heart, and The Phrase That Pays, a program that can mean prizes for listeners at home as well as the studio audience. For music, there's The Bob Smith Show with plenty of laughs blended in with the melody. The drama is supplied by a series of longtime favorites. Programs like Stella Dallas, Young Widder Brown, The Woman in My House, and many more. And for news, NBC is your best bet all through the day for keeping well informed. You'll hear commentators and reports like Alex Dreyer, Pauline Frederick, Morgan Beatty, Ray Henley, and many others who bring you the latest news as it happens and take you behind the scenes for the inside stories. For the very best in daytime radio entertainment, stay with NBC. There's another exciting dragnet adventure tonight on the NBC radio network.